Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today we're starting a little later than normal. I was shoveling all morning. I'll take you outside and show you all the snow we got last night. My wife has got a bucket of snow that she's melting for her plants. Here's a look at our house and all the shoveling I did. It was a lot. I made a mountain. I was doing the driveway and the neighbor was nice enough to come and do the end with his snowplow this morning. So that was awesome. So yeah, we got a fair amount of snow. We didn't get as much as some people got. Like down in Chicago, they got a lot more than us. So that, that was good. But, uh, you know, it's fairly deep if you look at the, the amount of snow we got in one night. There's a look at the matrix. You can see how deep it is on top of that. You can't even recognize what kind of car it is. Even the truck, look at the truck. It's all filled in with snow here. That's just from one night. I'm getting some good icicles up there. This part isn't insulated, so it all melts up there and runs down. This part is insulated, but I'm still getting a lot of melting. I had to clear off the snow on top of the garage. It was really weighted down, so I shoveled that all off, and you can see it's getting pretty high on the walls here now, compared to inside, which is way down there the floor level yeah a lot of snow this uh top has to be replaced in the garage it's got all kinds of holes in it i think it's about 20 years old now behind me is where i film outdoors and you can see how much snow is on that lots of snow on the bonsai benches you can see them here how much snow there is and that's, you know, that's pretty deep. If you compare my hand there, that's a lot of snow on the benches. Yeah, so I had to shovel off the roof of the greenhouse. It was all kind of caving in from the weight of the snow. Looks like it's kind of bounced back a bit now. I can see the rabbits have been chewing on my cedar here because the snow level's so high. And yeah. Here's the pile of snow from the roof up here. Yeah. Yeah, so all the trees are hopefully safe and doing well indoors in the greenhouse there. Somewhere under here are my trees. They're well protected from the wind, so that's one good thing. Here's the site of my future greenhouse. I'll be building that this summer, getting it all in place and trying to make it as energy efficient as possible. I also did the papers this morning. That was a hard walking this morning. Couldn't ride my bike. There's too much snow. I'm going to start today with a update to my saber leaf ficus. It is coming out into leaf once again. In the last video on this tree, I did some quite severe pruning. And now I've got new shoots coming out that I can use to start forming a canopy. I'm really starting to like this tree. I think the roots are developing really nicely. The trunks are getting nice taper and thickness. It's starting to look like a miniature tree. I cut off my shorter trunk too and it has a new shoot coming up. Nice and strong. My trunk towards the back has lots of branches developing on it. So it's looking really good. I was really happy to see my saber leaf ficus come back into leaf and start growing again. I'll put the saber leaf ficus back on the bench and we'll get out another update. My next update is my donated lemon tree. I did a severe chop on the top and it's got a whole bunch of new shoots coming out all over. So that's really good. That'll eventually form my canopy up here and it'll look less stick-like. There's a look at all the new shoots. I got one, two, three, four, five, six of them up top. So that's really good. I've got a lot of work to go on this tree, eventually bringing the branches in more compact, developing my canopy, but I got the root base sorted out and it's off to a good start, I think. Here's an update to my pencil cactus after the last pruning. So some of the branches have just stayed there doing nothing, while others have grown new shoots off them and leaves and are looking really good. So the plant survived the pruning. Um, again, a very difficult plant to shape. I, uh, I still haven't figured out the secret of them yet. 
My next update is my Natal ficus cutting, and it's doing really well. It's got lots of nice aerial roots. It's leafing out nicely. And the reason I'm updating this is because I'm considering using an Natal ficus on my root over temple planting. I like the leaf shape, I like the leaf size, and I like the fact it grows aerial roots really easily. I really like the way this aerial root comes down and then it divides into one, two, three, four, five different roots before it hits the ground. I really like that, that's really cool. I was busy yesterday casting the walls for my temple and I've made five sections so far and I can start assembling it today. Here's a look at the casting work I've done so far. So I've cast four heads and five sections for the column. So today I can start putting it together. Before I start cementing all the pieces together, stacking them up to make my column, I'll need to put my vertical lines in the pieces to separate it into stone blocks. So I'll get out the hacksaw and I'll do that. I'll just cut and cut my lines in the sides. After the big storm, it looks like we've got sun in the plant room for today. So that's just awesome. In order to prepare the pieces for cementing together, I'll need to soak them all in a tub of water. So when I put the cement on, it doesn't dry out and make a lousy bond. So I'll do that and then I'll take one out of the water at a time and work on it and put it back in. I've got my bucket of water here, so in the pieces go. I can hear them sucking up the water. And the heads go in too. There's a look at all the bubbles coming up from the cement pieces as they absorb the water. That way when you cement them together, the cement doesn't dry out and it makes a really good bond. All right, I'm going to get out one piece at a time. So here's my first one. And I'll want to put lines down it. And I'm thinking, I just want it kind of random. If I look at my face, you can see the stone blocks, they're about that long. So, you know, about half the thickness or the width of the, uh, of the column. So I'll just place them kind of randomly along, not too close. I don't want them looking like bricks. So I'll start the first one right here. It doesn't have to be too deep. That's fine, as long as there's a line there. And I think that's good. I think I'll make one here. Uh, that's a long stone, so this will be short. Like that. So that makes a stone here. And I'll separate this one to right, right here. Like that. And one here. Like that. And one here. Well, that's good. One here. Like that. And that's it. That's got all my stone lines in on that piece. So back into the tank it goes. And I'll get up my next piece. So I'll continue doing all my pieces and then we'll come back for assembly. I've got all the vertical lines cut in my blocks so you can see them going around. So my next job is to cement them together. 
So I'll just have to put a thin layer of cement between them, glue each one on top of another, try and line them up the best I can. I'll mix up some cement and start assembly. All right, here I go with the cement. Just kind of trowel it on. A little more. Okay, and that is going to be, this piece goes on. I should put a bit of cement on that surface too, just because it's fairly, fairly rough. I don't want too much cement squishing out between my my blocks either so I got to be careful I think that'll do all right here I go I don't know what orientation I had it I think like that okay so lining it up from the corners here pushing down that's good and then cleaning up my excess And on goes that one. Again, lining up the corners, pressing it down. Okay, now this one can go on. Again, lining up the corners, pressing it down firmly, wiping the excess off. Line up the corners, press down firmly. Okay, that's all looking good. Wipe off the excess. And I think that's got it cemented together. How exciting. Here's a look at the center column now, all cemented together. Looking nice, I like it. I'm glad I made the separate pieces. The overhangs are slightly different. It looks quite uh, realistic, like it's made of stone blocks. My next task will be to cement the stone faces on it. So it might take a little fitting. Maybe I'll have to file down some of the high spots to get them to sit a little flatter, but yeah, it'll be something like that is what it'll look like on all four sides. And that'll make up one section of the temple. There'll be a top piece and a base piece. For the base piece, I'm going to try and put doorways. So four doorways coming in each side. So I think that'll be cool if you imagine this raised up and then a, a section underneath with doorways and it'll stick out a bit on each side. I think that'll be quite nice. And then the top piece, I think they usually transition from square to a round kind of conical type shape up here, very fancy. So that'll be interesting to work out all the details on that too. But one step at a time, I'll be cementing the heads on next. I'm going to let the cement in the center column harden for about an hour or two, and then I can tip it up on its side and attach my first face. So that'll be really fun. So I'll come back in about an hour or maybe two. It's been about an hour and a half and I think my cement is set and nice and firm. So I'm going to attach the first face and I want to pick the nicest side to be the front. That's a nice face there. That one's okay. Nothing wrong with that one. I think I'll probably pick this as the front. I'll get out my face. So I'm going to put this one on the front. It's the fanciest face. It doesn't sit too badly on there. 
There's a slight high spot. I could try filing that down a bit. Well, that, that'll improve it anyway. Yeah, that's pretty good. A little cement and that'll be nice and firm. So I better soak this surface. I'll uh, spray it down with water and make sure it's not gonna dry out when I'm putting the cement on. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's, it's still soaked with water. All right, I'll mix up some cement and we will cement the face on. That'll be exciting. All right, I have my cement mixed up. So I will first apply it to the back of the head here. Trying to build up a nice layer so it'll be cemented all around. So there won't be any gaps or anything. I can wipe away the excess, carve it away if I have to. Okay, that's a good thick layer on there. Then I'll add some to the temple here. Kind of guessing where the face will be. Okay, and now I'll stick it down. Here I go. Maybe I'll make this the bottom. Like this. Okay, so pushing down now, nice and firmly. I have to make sure the head is aligned. looking really good. Seems to be central on the face there. Now, just going to add a bit of cement around the edges here where there's a bit of a gap there. Like that. I'll just check around this edge too. That's looking good. I need some around here like that. Oh, I got plenty of cement. All right, so I'm just going, going to go around. I can add a bit more of the ear here that fell off or broke off. Now, I may want to carve in my cracks so they continue along to the face while the cement is wet. Continue my lines here, so... So it looks like stone, that stone continues. Okay, I think that is attached. Looking good. I've left the cement around the face dry for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. So now I can turn it on its side and attach face number two. The days are getting longer it's almost six o'clock and it's still light out, which is just amazing. I'm going to do more FaceTime now. So I've got out face number two and that will go here. And that sits nice and flat. It's looking good. All right, I'll mix up my cement and we'll attach face number two. I'll make sure my surfaces are nice and wet before I apply the cement, this one just came out of the bucket, so it's good. All right, I'll mix up my cement now. Now it's very important that I don't glue the head on or cement it on upside down. <laughs> that would be a disaster. Okay, here I go. It is the right way up. That's a good start. Now I've got to line the head up to make sure it's absolutely vertical. It's not on a tilt. There's a look at the column with the two faces on it now. Looking pretty cool, I think. So I'm going to let that dry again for an hour or two and I can attach face number three. 
Here's a look at the middle section of the temple now with two faces on it. It's looking really cool. So th this is going to be quite big when it's done because it'll have a big base under here and a top to it. Big ficus growing on it or yeah, some kind of a tree. Moss, hopefully. So I'm going to attach face number three now. I might have to set it on something so I don't, I'm not wrecking this face, I'm not breaking the nose off or something. Maybe some plaster scene. I'll set it on a base of plaster scene and that should hold it. This face is a little rough, so I'm just going to do a little filing just to kind of smooth it out a bit. That should do it. All right, let me get out face number three now. Face number three will be the first one I ever made. So that'll go on the top here. And I think I better do a bit of filing on this. It's sticking up a bit at the ears. I don't know, this one's pretty hard. This cement definitely hardens as it gets older. It becomes really hard to file and work with. Yeah, that's pretty hard. I may just have to build it up with cement underneath in that hollow spot. Yeah, that'll be okay. It won't be too high or anything. All right, I'll do that. I'll mix up a little more cement than normal. Now I better wet the surface up top here. Make sure that's nicely soaked. I've got face number three attached now. So it's looking quite quite complex. I like it. Um, I'm going to let that dry once again. Once I've attached the fourth face to the temple, it'll be really interesting to see what it looks like in the sunlight. And that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>